I've found myself doing a lot of things recently that involve taking in some input as a string, usually some source file, and then transforming that either directly with regexes or through using an abstract syntax tree. This has been in an open source setting, so I've been working in other people's code bases, and I kept running into this. I would find these snapshot tests along with an accompanying snapshots folder. It was intuitive enough to see what was happening. These tests are matching the output against what is in this snapshots folder. And given the naming style of the snapshots folder, it seemed likely these were being auto-generated by Jest. The first couple of times I contributed code to things that were being tested with these snapshots, I just manually modified the snapshot. The tricky thing is though that this to match snapshot call is very particular about the formatting. So you have to make sure everything is spaced correctly in order to pass the test, but that might not actually be relevant to whether the code works or not. So the next time I came across these tests, I decided it was probably time I learned how to use them properly, and they are actually pretty great to work with. The trick is that if you create a new test and you use this to match snapshot matcher, the first time the test runs, it will take the output of the test and create the snapshot file for it. So the first time you run the test, it will always pass, and then that output is what will be expected for future test runs. If I run this test again now, you'll see that it passes because it still matches the snapshot. But if I make some change so that this test produces different output, it is going to fail. But it could be that this new output being produced is actually how the feature should behave now. In that case, we can run our test, but pass the update snapshot flag, and it will update the snapshot to whatever the output for this test run was. And so of course that means the test will pass. Now I generally prefer a TDD approach, so I'm going to show what using this method actually looks like in a real scenario. I'll show you what I did for this bug fix I contributed to the signal inputs conversion schematic in ng extension. So let's go back in time to just before the commit with the fix. We don't actually need to add a new test here because we already have this converts properly test, which generally checks to see if the entire template has converted properly. So we will be utilizing that rather than needing to create a new test with its own snapshot. What I do need to do, however, is go to this example template and add in the situations that the schematic wasn't converting properly. The problem was that the schematic was being too eager in updating values in the template. When converting an input called normal input to a signal input, it would search through the template to update the input to correctly access the signal value. However, in this situation, it was updating parts of the template that it shouldn't. Like when normal input is used as the name of the input of a child component, or when it is used as part of a selector or attribute value. Let's see what happens if we run the test now. It fails and you can see the issues I was talking about, but it's not failing because of these issues. It is failing just because we have added extra stuff that the snapshot is not expecting. What we need to do now is update the snapshot, which we can do by passing the update snapshot flag. But now the test passes, which we don't want either. This is where the TDD aspect of this approach comes in. What we can do now is go to the relevant snapshots and modify them to be the correct output we expect. I need to do this in two places because there are two snapshots that use the template we updated. Now if we run the test, making sure that we don't pass the update snapshot flag this time, we can see that it fails. And it fails specifically because this schematic isn't handling the situation we are trying to fix. This gives us a great development environment to work with as we have an easy way to verify if the fix is working as intended or not and also that we haven't broken any of the other functionality. Now we can apply whatever fix we need. In this case, the regexes being used needed to be updated, and then we can verify our fix by running the tests and seeing if they pass. Sometimes you will be able to see that the test should be passing, but it is failing just because of some minor formatting or spacing differences. In this case, you can just run the test again, passing the update snapshot flag so that it passes. Just don't cheat and do that if the test actually shouldn't pass though. And so now the test passes and our fix is complete. And for anyone else who comes to modify this code in the future, we can be confident our case will continue to work because we've added a test case to make sure it is handled, which is especially important in a case like this where we are relying on complicated regexes, which could easily cause regressions if changed. If you found this video useful, please consider a like or subscribe before you go. And I hope to see you back here again.